Greetings, fellow Kerbonauts. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Rice, and this is The Minimalist Shuttle Program, Episode 3. Now it seems that our space shuttle program has gained so much renown that our neighbors in the bordering country of the People's Republic of Micro Kerbalia have decided to start their own program. While somewhat less technologically inclined, but no less ambitious, they have constructed what they refer to as the Glorious Leaders Shuttle, or <laughs> no doubt some sort of name that's equally patriotic. And leading Micro Kerbalia's space race to settle the stars is their first cosmonaut, Kilfred Kerman, no doubt on some mission to solidify his glorious nation's presence in space by delivering some sort of unnamed secretive cargo. And just look at his stoic expression. No doubt prime propaganda material for television and the magazines. <laughs> okay, so this was actually a leftover design from a series I once considered doing. Uh, I, I once considered doing something called the Micro Space Program, where I build spacecraft uh, with parts no larger than the 1.25 meter items, or set some sort of huge weight limitation. However, even though the series never happened, I was looking through some of my old vehicle designs, and then I discovered this little puppy, and thought to myself, you know... Even though I said I would focus on the three primary shuttles, the light shuttle, the heavy shuttle, and the lunar shuttle, this would be a great opportunity to showcase some of the other shuttle designs that I have. So allow me to introduce the Micro Shuttle. Weighing in at an- oh, wait, 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 let's, let's get him back up. Oh, 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 gotta stabilize it, come on, come on. Let's bring her back up, and come on, come on, come on, I know you can do it. Oh my gosh. Woo. Close. Okay, so weighing in at an incredible 7 tons and consisting of 21 parts, this vehicle has the ability to carry a hefty 2 tons of cargo into low carbon orbit. Now what I really like about this design is it's, well, it's pretty elegant, right? There's no, uh, there's no unneeded parts on this vehicle, and it's extremely light. So this vehicle is very, very controllable. Unfortunately, it can be a little too controllable. As you can see on the nav ball, I'm just fighting to keep this guy on a straight trajectory. Unlike the larger shuttles, where you can give minuscule course corrections, this vehicle just loves to sway and move about. And if you're a little zealous on the button presses, it'll flip over on a dime. But, as long as you stay within cargo carrying limits, this vehicle can be really fuel efficient. Especially since it only has four light engines. Unlike the other shuttles in our fleet that use those heavy, Heavy first stage gas guzzling monster engines. Now this one just sips fuel. So, just like what you saw earlier when I did that amazing shuttle cartwheel flip, <laughs> uh, this shuttle gives you uh, plenty of margin for error. We are now in suborbital flight, and Comrade Kilfred, you have made your glorious nation proud. What do you see up there? Well, it seems that uh, the world is round. No doubt, a profound discovery by the People's Republic of micro -Kerbalia. Well then, let's, uh, let's circularize our orbit, shall we? <laughs> okay, uh, terrible accents and all. Let's uh, see about uh, going into our burn so that we circularize our orbit. Um, Make sure that our first cosmonaut is not our first dead cosmonaut. I'm, I'm sure you very much want to stay alive, isn't that right, Comrade Kilfred? Okay. Now the downside of being such a light shuttle is that you don't have a whole lot of counterweight to offset uh, your vehicle when you go into your burns. This thing does have a tendency to flip over, especially as it gets lighter when it loses its fuel. And speaking of loss of fuel, that tank is now empty. So let's set our engines to straight down the center of mass, drop our empty fuel tank, and our launch engines. Now being a minimalist means that we get rid of all the unnecessary parts and doodads that we don't necessarily need anymore. Those engines that we got rid of constitutes a full ton of weight, and being just a seven ton spacecraft, 
well, that's a significant percentage of our overall mass that could have weighed us down, re-entering into the planet, and also helped save us a bit of Delta V as well. And not to be outdone by the capitalist Kerbal National Space Station, we of the glorious People's Republic of Microkerbalia have decided to start our own station at 140 kilometers above Kerbin. No doubt to uh, better spy on our western neighbors. As you can see, we are now inserting our glorious leader's space station core. <laughs> And just look at that little thing. Um, this is going to be a micro space station. A little bit of an experiment of mine. See if we can make this little thing work. So, Comrade Kilfred, let's step outside and inspect our craftsmanship. And no doubt, our communist craftsmanship is much better than our western counterparts. Because we possess amazing technology to fit more snacks in less space. And upon further inspection, we have concluded that it looks like there aren't any scratches or dings. So everything looks perfect. So let's head back into our shuttle and let's get ready to release our payload. Okay, and here we go. And time for our inaugural payload release. Decouple! And let's RCS the vehicle out. Now, this station core really doesn't have much of anything, really. It's the uh, same thing as the other station core. This one is just a tool shed in space with battery power and docking ports. And, as you can see on the sides, those miniature junior docking ports. Uh, now, I tried to fit the large size docking ports on the side of that core originally. However, that cargo bay is so small, um, it can't really fit anything on the sides. I couldn't even put any solar panels on the side of that core. So, I had to compromise with those really tiny ports. So, it seems that uh, once we start building this station, and we attach the other modules to it, those tiny, tiny docking ports won't have the ability to have the Kerbals move about throughout the station um, via its interior. Looks like they'll have to get out in their spacesuits and uh, spacewalk from module to module. But you know, doing crazy stuff like that, that's the Kerbal way. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and face our module to the north. Now, whenever I put some sort of stationary object in space, i.e. a space station or a fuel depot, I, I, have, a tendency, I have a tendency to point it uh, directly towards the north, and that's to make things easier when we intercept the vehicle and we dock. Um, it's always good to have a consistent direction uh, where your objects are facing, especially if you plan to keep them in orbit permanently. That way they're facing straight up and down, um, and their docking ports are predictable as you approach them. Okay, and it looks like we've got everything set and ready to go. Orbit looks perfect, circularized at 140 kilometers. Comrade Kilfred, time for you to report back to the shuttle. So that you can go home and tell your tales to the people about your amazing space journey. How you were the first cosmonaut to spacewalk. The first cosmonaut to bring an object to space. The first cosmonaut to fly the space shuttle. And most importantly, the first cosmonaut to eat snacks in space. Okay, so let's play this dance and see if we can get into the cockpit. Oh, not so good this time. Let's let's try this one again. Uh, having your Kerbals grab ladders in space or to grab cockpits in space, it leaves something to be desired. Um, I think the grab mechanics can be a little bit wonky sometimes. Uh, fortunately, the stock parts and the stock cockpits tend to be a little bit more forgiving. This is one of those exceptions, though. Because <laughs> grabbing that ladder has a tendency to throw me off, and then I gotta use RCS packs to get back again, and then I gotta approach it at just the right angle so I don't get flung back out to space. Let's see if we could try this again. Okay. Here we go, and perfect! We've got it! Alright, so let's get back into the cockpit then, 
And let's prep for our D orbit. Close up those doors and turn off those lights. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is probably one of the most textbook flights um, with any shuttle I've ever done. Oh, wait a minute. Did I forget? Yeah, I forgot something. Um, let's see about heading back out again. Let's. But first, before we go back out, we're going to RCS a little bit closer to our, um, sh uh, to our space station. That way, we don't have to traverse as far to go back towards our shuttle. So let's ease ourselves back up. See how close we can get uh, without smacking into it. <laughs> okay, and we are almost there. And that's about close enough. Okay, so Comrade Kilfred, you have one last task to do before returning back to Kervin. You must step out in EVA and go back into station. <laughs> Most important part of the mission, and I can't believe I almost forgot. So let's uh, let's jet on over. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Kill for a jet, 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 jet. Don't waste any, e no, waste all the EVA fuel you need. Let's go, 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 go. And be, we, when we come in, we got to be sure that uh, we make sure we don't bump you know, too hard uh, into this module. So we send it careening. And in the wrong direction. For being a capsule so light, uh, Kerbals can influence um, their motion um, and, surprisingly, their orbital trajectory, too. Okay, and moving in a little bit slower this time. Tippy-tappy. Come on, guy. You can do it. And grab! Perfect. Okay. Now, let's fix a few things, shall we? Okay. We need to rename this station, or give it, or rather, give it a proper name. We'll call it the People's Space Station. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's do that. No, wait, wait, wait. Um, I wonder. People's Space Station. Let's try something else. Um, doesn't quite have a have a ring to it. So let's give it a little bit more zing, shall we? We'll call it, um, hmm, the People's Revolutionary Space Station. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Ah, Kilfred, you almost botched this mission. <laughs> but fortunately, you saved it. So now, now we're ready to go home for realsies. Head back to our shuttle, and let's jet on over. Jet, 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 jet. Okay, and let's see if the ladder to the cockpit is a little bit more forgiving this time. I prefer not to play the grab and dance game <laughs> this time. Come on, come on, come on, you can do it, Kilfred. Come on, right towards the ladder. And success! So, to help alleviate the tedium of re-entry, we are going to speed up time a little bit here. We're going to go at five times speed while we set up our maneuver nodes and whatnot and prepare to head back into the atmosphere. Now, what's really neat uh, about this uh, micro shuttle is it is extremely flyable. If, in case you hadn't noticed, the wings on this micro shuttle are the exact same wings that we use on the heavy shuttle, with the exception of uh, some of the control surfaces. So what that means to us is that this thing has a lot of margin for error coming back into the atmosphere. With that said, we are going to try something different. And instead of landing on the Space Center runway, we are going to shoot for the secondary runway on that little island, slightly off to the east. Because Comrade Kilfred is master of flight and can land wherever he chooses. <laughs> and I imagine he wants to start his vacation a little bit early by landing on some rustic tropical island, even if it is one, about one kilometer away from the Kerbal Space Center. Did I say Kerbal Space Center? I meant Glorious People's Space Airport. 
<laughs> you know, the more I think about it, the more I think uh, that little cheesy accent I do sounds a lot more like some sort of Dracula campy Transylvania film. Blah, blah, I want to land your space shuttle. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. We're coming in. And in case you hadn't noticed, um, there's a severe lack of control surfaces on these wings. Aside from the uh, aside from the rudder controls at the top, there are no elevators on these wings, which means that all of the elevation controls are controlled strictly with those reaction wheels. And for a shuttle this size, you can actually get away with it. But you have to be a little bit careful because those inline reaction wheels, the only thing they do is they steer your vehicle in a certain direction. Well, not necessarily steer, but just point it in a certain direction. The control surfaces in this game are coded in such a way where they act a lot like engines with a huge amount of gimbling. So when you tilt your control surfaces in a certain direction, the faster you go, the more thrust those control surfaces give. And in a way, that's how people are able to take advantage of the aerodynamics in this game, and in a way it's coded, by doing things like building infinigliders and whatnot, because they know that control surfaces provide uh, some sort of vectored thrust that can potentially speed them up if they flip their control surfaces back and forth like fishtails. And using that RCS for landing is probably a little bit of an overkill. However, it serves a dual purpose in not only controlling the craft, and that it also gives the ability to slow us down. Okay, now we're back to regular time, and we are on approach to the runway. Now, in the old version of the game, the secondary runway uh, on the island was a raised piece of dirt. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that this dirt runway is now level with everything else. So now I don't have to worry about landing on this runway with the possibility of accidentally falling over one of the raised surfaces or mounds of dirt that they have to decide. Um, everything seems to be a lot flatter now and easier to navigate on. And look at that. We've got a pin point textbook landing. Gilfred Kerman, you have earned the appreciation and admiration of your people. Return home now as the hero of the People's Republic of Macrocarbalia. <laughs> okay, I hereby declare this episode mission complete. Thank you everyone for watching. We will see you next time.